Ian Payne. In for Ian Dale at Drive on LBC. So, um, who, if anyone, should we be fighting in Syria now? Syria's foreign minister has said today that the US should not conduct airstrikes inside the country against the Islamic State group without the consent of the capital, Damascus, in Syria, saying any such attack would be considered an aggression. His words appear time to try and preempt any US military action in Syria. President Obama has resisted ordering US military action there for three years, even after that deadly chemical weapons attack a year ago. President Assad was blamed for that. And now it seems he's OK, but the people he's fighting are worse. So now we have to bomb them, do we? Or should we, as I believe, just not be involved in any of these conflicts? Because whatever we do, for whoever we bomb, for whoever we support we're going to cause problems in the long run. You just have to look anywhere in the world. It happens every single time. The problems don't go away, they get worse. 0345 6060973, if you agree or disagree, I've got any point to make on this particular subject. Let's speak to Nabila Ramdani, who is a Middle East commentator and journalist. What what is the very latest, Nabila, about that situation and about the American intentions? Well, uh, we're hearing quite a lot coming out of Syria, uh, in fact, and it's very clear that Assad and indeed his government are quite clearly positioning themselves as uh, important allies to the West in the war on terror, and especially against, you know, the threat that ISIS represents, they say, not only to Syria, but to the whole of of the region and more widely to to the world. So uh, there has been an awful lot of effort deployed by the Assad uh, you know, communication departments, but also his foreign ministry, who um, keeps stressing uh, how crucial the role of Syria will be in um, in cooperating with the West. But as you uh, said, um, you know, in your introduction just now, Assad was at one stage seen as someone, um, uh, you know, he was seen as... A pariah, probably, the enemy. Uh, uh, he was... Uh, I mean, before he became an international pariah, he was at one stage seen as one of the most pro-Western leaders uh, in the Middle East. He was even received with the queen, by the Queen mm. uh, at Buckingham Palace with his English wife. His wife's from Acton. Oh, absolutely. But following the 2011 pro- uh, pro-democracy revolt, uh, this picture changed completely, and he soon emerged as a ruthless dictator who thought nothing of murdering his own people, including women and children and all in a bid to remain in power. And Obama at the time had spoken about drawing a line in the sand against Assad using chemical weapons only to ignore that line in the sand um, as a conclusive proof of Assad using uh, gas against his own people emerged. Uh, Now, Assad has been referred to as a barbaric, you know, monster on many occasions, not least of all by you know, the foreign foreign, um, foreign secretary in the UK, William Hague, who even went as far as, you know, uh, calling for Assad to be referred to the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity. And, and so clearly Assad was not the kind of man that any democracy would want to describe uh, as so an what, ally. So, Nabila, what has changed? There's been a sea change. There's been a complete reversal in policy. I think the sea change comes mainly from the, the absolute threat that ISIS represents. And also, and there I say more crucially, uh, from the principal dynamic of foreign uh, Western policy, which is self-interest. And at this moment in time, Assad appears to be far less of a threat to Western interest than ISIS. And it's for this reason that he will be pursued as an ally who can assist in the destruction of ISIS as a military threat. And there will be a great deal of appeal to Assad to do this. Um, And he is himself convinced. Uh, that his own future lies in working with the West and especially with America uh, and Britain. And and the, and these these people, the ISIS that, that that America is so and the West is so concerned about, were they always originally part of the uh, the opposition and and the enemy to Assad, or have they sort of joined in the revolution with other groups? No, uh, the the quite clearly the 2011 uh, revolt against Assad started as a, a very peaceful pro-democracy um, uh, movement. Um, unfortunately, lots of forces got involved uh, in, in, in that um, murky, in what turned out to be a murky civil war. Mm. And uh, fighters like uh, al-Qaeda fighters and, and, and more ferocious uh, than al-Qaeda fighters, ISIS fighters, who are 
you know, have been disowned by Al-Qaeda uh, because of, you know, how evil they are, uh, have, you know, been allowed to grow uh, in, in Syria and now control a quarter of, of Iran. And what would you say, Nabila, is the end game for ISIS? The whole world to be converted to Islam? Well, I think uh, ISIS has a very uh, nasty, uh, to say the least, uh, agenda, an ideological uh, agenda. Uh, and I think what the West is trying to achieve is to deal with it in, as the pragmatic military threat that it represents, not so much in terms of you know, fighting the, the ideology, which is likely not to disappear, but to be pragmatic about uh, destroying um, ISIS's uh, military uh, capability, and that's the main job that the West is trying to focus on. And clearly, it involves a real politic, which um, is often carried out in secrecy. Uh, let's not forget that no Western power is at this time, you know, uh, saying that it will openly collaborate with Syria. It often happens behind closed doors. It involves um, intelligence because it's to do with security policy, which is the most brutal form of government. There's no sensibility involved. It's hard-headed realpolitik, which primarily involves intelligence and, and military form, and that is to say violence. OK, Nabila, thank you very much for talking to us. Nabila Ramdani is a journalist and a Middle East commentator. What do you think about this?